Back at my favorite place, the dam. No, there's no crocodiles in there. The number of people that ask me that, I love it. It does look like a sort of outback croc infested dam, but anyway, also fresh water, just so people know. So it is a little, a little harder to paddle up than salt water, um, but just something to keep in mind. But today I am testing something different. Um, after the last video where I was testing um, mast length height and how that affected the paddle up, this time I got two variables I want to test. One, which I think yeah, there is so much hype over and I've heard a lot about, but I just wanted to test it for myself, and that is the blade size on the paddle. So I've got here the new PPC. Um, it's 105 square inches. Beautiful looking paddle. Um, so really keen to test that. And this is my standard one. This was the Sonova, I think it's 82 square inches. Um, but as you can see, way bigger paddle here on the right and I think I was really keen everyone's been buying the Ono Ava from Quickblade but to me Aussie dollars it's over a thousand dollars or around a thousand dollars which I mean that's just nuts for a paddle this thing's half the price so to me I was stoked they actually sent it to me I didn't buy it myself so I can't really but look it's gonna be an honest review see what I feel see how it affects the paddle up um, so yeah, a couple different things with that. After that, I'm going to, once I've decided on which is the better blade <laughs> or paddle, I'm then going to test fuselage length. So I've got the 70, the 60 and the 50. So I'm going to start, I always run the 70 when I'm downwinding. So I'm going to start on that and then keep getting smaller and smaller. See what sort of differences changing that fuselage length does to the paddle up and just go from there. And in terms of board, I've got the production 6.3 Armstrong downwind board. Um, that's just my go-to, so that's what I ride. And front wing, I'm going to go mid-aspect 1750 with a 220 glide tail. The reason I'm running those big mid-aspects, yes, I can paddle up way smaller foils. But I think for guys, A, learning to paddle up and get into downwinding, they're going to be riding big gear like this. So I want to be on big gear. I want to feel... I guess what it's like. I think when you start trying to paddle up fast, small, high aspects, there's a lot of difference in what you're feeling. So I just want to keep it, keep it relevant to what the majority of guys are going to be riding. So I'm going to set this gear up, start with the 70 fuse, get that set up, rigged up. Oh yeah, also mast, 795 mast. Um, that's just my, I think it's an all round go-to size. It's sort of coming out. Most guys are riding around that 80 centimeter mark as a go-to for prone and downwinding, stuff like that. So I'm just going to leave it at that kind of middle point, not crazy long, not crazy short, and then test the other variables from there. So I'm going to rig that up, I'll test the blades, and then we'll start swapping out fuses. Woo! Quick word of warning, don't use these when you're tightening up your gear. I don't normally use them. I'm using them now because I've got to quickly change gear out. But if you do use them, use them on the lowest power setting and don't tighten them up all the way. I just go to it clicks once and then hand tighten it. You can strip bolts. They've got so much power. So while yes, I'm using them, be cautious with them. All right, I got the paddles. I'm going to start with my regular setup or my regular paddle. Just get a couple paddle ups with that, warm up and just get back into feeling what it does. Then I'm going to go jump to the bigger paddle. I'm going to keep them at the exact same length um, and then go from there. All right. I'll set the camera up so it's just the exact same view and then I'll just go back to back with those and can you compare. Not at all what I was expecting, which was very interesting. It actually took me three goes to even paddle up. Not because 
the blade, it was purely me. So the main thing was that I could, as I was pulling, like even third stroke, I could start to feel I was pulling myself up on foil. Whereas with the smaller blade, you're kind of working the board speed up. It's a much more gradual process to then get up on foil. But with this, you can just pull really hard and I was just pulling myself out of the water. I actually felt like I wanted to move my mast a little bit further back compared to normal because I was pulling so hard, the foil was just engaging and coming up under me and I just wasn't ready for it. So even I just did three pile ups with it and I barely felt like any of them were clean, but I was just so much easier to get up on foil. And I think particularly when you're downwinding, ultimately you probably got three, maybe two to three strokes of those initial strokes to even know if you're gonna get up on foil or not. So having a bigger blade just means you can pull really hard, rip in and just get up, get that bump straight away rather than having to work it up over time. So super impressed. I can, I can understand what all the hype is over the larger blade. For me, I just need to just get used to it a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna keep using it just so I can kind of dial it in while I'm testing the different fuse lengths. So I've just done the 70, I'll now go down to the 60, 50, see how that feels, but blade size, bigger blades are definitely a thing. The only caution which I've heard people say is they, they're they pretty gnarly in terms of shoulder injuries. So if you've got any sort of shoulder injuries, you know, putting on such a big blade, it does put more strain on your shoulders, but if you've got no injuries or if you've got no sup technique, that's the other thing, like a good paddler with a really fast, hard technique, they'll make a small paddle work either way. They're just that strong. But for me, I'm not, I don't have any sup backgrounds. I've only learned to sup purely so I could downwind. So that's where these big blades are definitely so much easier to get up. And I think with poor technique, you'll be able to get easy, up easier with a bigger blade. Just makes it so much easier. Whereas the smaller blade, you need a bit better technique, really fast cadence. So, positives and negatives, but for me, big blade, I love it, that's cool. Also, adjustable handle. So for me, one thing, I initially was worried about the weight of it, so with this setup, so this one is about 130 grams heavier than my fixed blade, and it's a bigger blade too, so, or my fixed paddle. So, for me, I might be able to shave a lot of weight out, like there's a really long extended bit, so I'm thinking about, just chopping that down, that'll save a bit of weight, maybe get it within, I don't know, 50 grams or so of my other paddle. Um, but the other thing is that it's really difficult and there's a lot of differing opinions on what length blade or paddle to use for paddling up with the SUP. Um, having the adjustable means you can test it. So a lot of guys started at head height, they've worked down to eyebrow height, I'm sort of middle of my forehead, but it also depends on how much volume you have in your board. So if you go to a higher volume board, you're effectively gonna be standing up higher in the water. So you, in that case, you wanna um, lengthen your paddle to kind of accommodate for that. But it's the same thing that once you're up on foil, you're standing you know, a foot up above, even further up above the water. So if you need to paddle while you're on foil, having a longer shaft is actually really good. So I'm thinking paddle up at your normal height, then once you're on foil and you're, you're down with this, lengthen it, clip it back in, then you don't have to bend down to take your stroke so much. You can stay upright a bit more and just you've got a longer reach to then pull. So, I don't know. I think the, fix, or the adjustable could be, could be the way to go. I mean, for me anyway, especially just being able to test and try different things, I'm a big fan of it. So, yeah. I was hesitant at first, but now I can see the benefits. All right, fuse time. Let's do it. Fuse is now on. I am just cranking everything up. This will be an interesting test. I've got a feeling of what I'm going to feel, but I want to just confirm it and then wait till I get down to the 50, and that'll kind of hopefully solidify what I'm feeling. With the mast, that was a totally different thing that I learned in my last video. So who knows? I've got ideas, but I want to just kind of go in a little, you know, just see what I feel and go from there. So, all right, 60. Let's do it.
unfortunately kind of confirmed what I was feeling. Um, still gonna test it on the 50, but the main thing was, so when you think about your fuse length, basically your front wing's at a certain angle, your tail wing's at a certain angle. So as you lengthen that fuse, it changes the radius that the foil can travel at in terms of its pitch change. So if you've got a really short fuse, that arc is a lot tighter. And if you've got a longer fuse, that arc is a lot longer. So you basically got two angles, you lengthen them longer radius. The main thing I felt there with the paddle up, which is kind of what I was thinking would happen, as you've got a shorter radius or the shorter fuse, it's easier as you release off the, or take your weight off the board with the paddle up to get it up out of the water. Because you've got that tighter radius, the nose comes up a lot quicker and it allows you to get up on foil quite a bit easier. It allows the board to release off the surface of the water a lot quicker and easier. Um, the flip side, I suppose, to running a shorter fuse is that once you're up on foil, it's gonna be more pitch sensitive. So you also, as you, if you push down and get projection forward, it's drawing a tighter radius with the shorter fuse. So it ends up being a little bit nose up, nose down. So if you're really struggling with it, just kind of always going nose up, nose down, you can lengthen the fuse to accommodate that. But purely for the paddle up, it definitely felt a lot easier on the shorter fuse, which is super interesting. The other side, which I don't want to confuse it too much, is a shorter fuse is easier to pump out of a hole or pump out when you're getting close to that stall speed to accelerate it back up to speed. And it's the same thing to do with that radius. If you've got a long fuse and you're starting to get go slower, 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 then all of a sudden you go, oh, I need to accelerate and you drive too hard. Because it's got to take such a long radius to get back up, you can stall the wing out because it's trying to run. If you don't have that distance to cover to get it back up, it'll just stall. Whereas with the shorter one, over a shorter distance, you can get back up high on the floor a lot quicker. So effectively, it means when you're getting down close to that stall speed, the shorter fuse can save you a few times. But anyway, I'll chuck the 50 on now, just kind of confirm that theory. But... Um, yeah, that's kind of what I was expecting. But to be honest, releases off the water a lot easier and drag any, like while I'm paddling, I didn't notice any differences. It was really just that much earlier and easier to jump it out of the water, get it to release from the surface and then get up on foil. So it was cool. Done. That was actually really interesting to test that shorter fuse. It was not actually exactly what I was expecting. So there are definitely positives and negatives. It's not just a shorter fuse comes up out of the water easier. So the main thing that I was feeling, I did five paddle ups with that one. I wasn't totally, it took me a little bit to actually get used to. So basically with the shorter fuse, yes, it releases and comes up out of the water um, quicker and easier with that tighter pitch radius, but Effectively, because it comes up earlier, you're not at a, as high a board speed when it starts lifting up out of the water. So what I found was, it, initially when I did my first paddle up, it would come out of the water and I just stall because I was going so much slower when it came out. I had to be much more delicate once it came out of the water on my pump going down. So that took me a couple paddle ups to really get used to, but once I got used to it, it came out so easy. But you do have to be very delicate on when you're pushing back down and trying to engage the foil. So that's definitely the, the drawback. The other thing is, you know, I'm doing this on a 1750. This, for me, is a big foil. Um, it's got good low end, but for heavier guys, or for guys that want to progress onto high aspect foils, having it engage or start lifting so early, you, you won't be at the board speed to engage a higher aspect foil. So it's definitely worth staying with a longer fuse um, with the high aspect foils. It gives you time to get your board speed up before it starts really releasing and coming up because if it releases too early and you just don't have that board speed, you're just never gonna get a high aspect up to the speed it needs to engage or start to stay on foil. So definitely the shorter fuse if you're like kind of on small or bigger, lower aspect foils, just learning to get up. 
shorter fuse really helps, makes it easy just to release and get out of the water. But if you're already good at paddling up and you want to progress to faster foils, the longer fuse I think has its advantages as well. So overall, if you're already paddling up and you're not struggling, stay in the middle of the range. 60 seems to be a good all round length. So I wouldn't stress too much about that. Um, and then last thing, paddle. This thing was epic. Um, I understand the hype around large blade sizes. Um, it felt really good. I actually just had the thought. I know the Ono Avas have a higher angle. Ooh, let's see. I can't really tell any difference. I'm going to say they're the same. I know this one's 10 degrees. So I'm going to say this one has 10 degrees of angle in the blade as well. I don't exactly know, but maybe but yeah it was really good it was powerful i understand if you got sore shoulders probably stay away from them but it was super powerful i could just put i could just rip hard and get myself up so that was actually really cool um adjustable i like this idea i'm going to play with it i think for guys learning if you don't know exactly what height you're at cutting down a blade and then going, i want a longer one or i want you to like, it's a bit of a nightmare and it's unless you really know paddles and know what you're after i think Adjustable is probably a good way to go. For me, I'm just excited to play with, you know, paddle up, extend it, then be able to paddle easier while I'm up on foil. Um, I am just going to cut down that sort of extendable bit to try and reduce a bit of the weight. But to be honest, it's under 500 grams. Oh no, it's 508 grams. I think I measured this one at. And my other one was like 480 something. So yeah, 130 grams difference. But, you know, 500-ish grams. I was pretty, pretty stoked. Hopefully I can get it down to maybe... 450 with chopping that off but yeah this thing's bigger blade the hype is real I'll, I'll give it that so yeah stoked to paddle out some more with this one tested it put it through its paces but so far it was really good and yeah play with fuse length that was interesting there, there are negatives and positives but I'm yeah pleasantly surprised that was cool one last thing when I was paddling up with the mast, those changes in mast height were very subtle. So if you look at my, if you haven't watched my last video, I looked at how mast length affects your paddle up. Changes in fuse length were much greater than changes in mast length. Um, that's what I felt. With the fuse, it took me, you know, I could feel the differences and it, you know, it took a little more to dial that in. With this, it was really obvious. I mean, these are 10 centimeter increments of fuse length, so maybe it's a bit more aggressive than just the smaller changes in the mast height. But for me, changes in fuse length made a much bigger difference than the changes in mast height. That makes sense. So maybe if you're wanting to change something, start with playing with your fuse length, then start playing with your mast length. So 